Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and the day has finally arrived. We're going to start our PHP series. Now, we've done a lot of development in PHP, but to this point have not released uh, very much uh, information on how to work with PHP. So we're going to start with the basics today. I'm going to show you how to uh, download a WAMP server to get it running locally on your machine. Now, and once you get it running, we're going to show you how to run your first program and then after that we're gonna move into a flash flex direction and show you how to integrate PHP with flash and flex of course the goal of all of this is to build a 3d learning management system and we've worked very hard in doing that and we're gonna show you how to do that as well in upcoming series Of course PHP is open source it's free and it's cross-platform but because it's free don't think it's cheap because it packs a punch probably the fourth most active language uh, it is server-side scripting so you will use it to talk to your server so we'll be so we'll be bouncing back and forth between Flash, Flex, and your server using PHP. See so a little bit of history here. It was originally a CGI script and C programming, released in 94, then 95, and then grabbed up by two Israelis, Go Israelis, uh, Zev uh, Suraski and Andy uh, Gutmans. And they basically rewrote it, and they started Zend. And uh, that was back in the PHP 3 days. And uh, I actually started with PHP back in uh, 3, and it's been wonderful to see uh, this uh, progress. And here's an image of uh, Rasmus Vidoff, who wrote the original, and then these two uh, Israeli guys, Andy Gutmus and Ziv uh, Zaraski, who rewrote it. And they created Zen, which kind of maintains PHP in its present state. Go ahead and visit Zen if you want to, www.zen.com. And to learn more about the history of PHP, just go to wikipedia.org forward slash wiki forward slash PHP. So what version should you be using? Use 5. Okay, so a lot of what we're going to show you today will run in 4, no problem. But we're going to be showing you some stuff, especially when we get to creating a blog reader, that will only work using version 5. So make sure you're working with version 5. And we're going to come along here and show you now how to get PHP running on a local server on your machine. Now one of the fastest and easiest way to get a local server running on your machine with PHP is to download WAMP. And WAMP stands for Windows, Apache, MySQL, PHP. With Mac you'd use MAMP and with Linux you'd use LAMP. So with the M and the L, of course you'd understand what that is. L for Linux and M for Mac. So with WAMP all you have to do is go to www.wampserver.com and uh, click the English for the English version and go ahead and start downloading. It's a simple download. You just follow the steps. I'll walk you through it real quick and then we'll move on with the lesson. I am on the WAMP server website and I'm going to click the English version of course. And all I need to do at this point is go to downloads and start downloading. And you can see we have the typical run or save. Let's run it. And it's about a 20 meg download and then once it downloads you'll be able to go step through the installation process. And so immediately you get this screen. Please do not try to update from WAMP 5.1. If you have WAMP 5.1 installed, save the data, uninstall WAMP, and delete the WAMP folder before installing the new release. And I already have a WAMP 5.1 installed, so I actually don't want to go through this process. But I'm just going to say you just it's a simple process. You just step through, just accept all the defaults, and you'll just be fine. And what will happen once you install your WAMP onto your machine you should start your server now if it's not started. It should automatically start, but if it's not, let me show you how to do that. Because many times people will try to run a program and it won't work because they don't have their WAMP server started up. So just go to Start menu, go to Programs, and just go to you go to the WAMP server. And there's the WAMP server right there. Let me move this over a little bit. So And you hit Start WAMP Server. And when you start your WAMP server up, you should have a little icon down here in your systems tray that looks like this. And if I click on that little icon, I have access to my local host and to my www directory. So let's take a look at the directory real quick. So you can see I installed WAMP in the C drive and www is my root directory. And at this point I can actually create some folders to hold my projects. And one folder I want to create basically is a sandbox. And I can actually put folders in that root folder now that I can access and run programs from. So I already have a PHP sandbox. So what you want to do is actually create a sandbox folder that you can keep on your desktop and actually do quick experiments to just place them right into the uh, desktop folder and actually run your program. So let's go ahead and create a folder right here. Hit New uh, Folder and just create one we'll call My Sandbox. And within that we're going to place PHP programs and we're going to run them. Now a quick way to get that onto your desktop is just to right click and drag it out 
and drop it. I actually want to pull this down so you can see the process, okay? So let's right click on that folder if you're in Windows, let go of it and drop it. It's going to ask you, hey, do you want to create a shortcut? And so yeah, create a shortcut here. And so now anything that I've placed in that folder basically referred back to my referred back to my root folder in my WAMP server. So let's go ahead and now create our first PHP program and get it running. Now, now one of the things you might ask right away is how do I know that my WAMP server is indeed running? So let's go ahead and bring up a browser real quick here. And we're going to type in a local host command and see if our browser does indeed come up. We'll come along here and type HTTP colon forward slash forward slash local host. There it is right there. And we click there we see oh indeed there is my WAMP server web page. So I know that my WAMP server is running. Another way to get to this of course would be to come down here to your system tray and click on that WAMP server icon and just go to the local host. And when you do, up comes the exact same web page. We're going to actually use this a lot. We're going to go to localhost and we create PHP files. We're just going to surf down to where they're at on the server page. So you can come along here and take a look at that localhost server page. And right there you can see I, I have my uh, sandbox that I created. Here's my sandbox in that I'll be putting different uh, folders or uh, application I create and I click on them and they'll run. So that's a great way to set up WAMP to get it running and to actually mobilize it to make it quick a quick process where you just have a folder on your desktop, you're throwing uh, shortcuts, you're throwing files into that shortcut folder and you're running it from your uh, WAMP system icon. So basically a streamlined approach and now let's start by creating our first application. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a text file. So I'm going to come up here and grab a blank text file so I'm just going to open up my text editor. And I had created, I've created a folder called My Starter Text. And basically it's just an empty uh, notepad. So you can edit uh, PHP in a number of editors. It's just so simple to work with. You can use Notepad, Dreamweaver, Flex, Eclipse. I often uh, I'm using either Notepad, Dreamweaver, or Flex. And so we've created our, our shortcut uh, folder and we're going to create our first PHP program and it's just PHP, PHP info and question mark. What does all this mean? So when you see the lesson sign question mark PHP that turns on the PHP parser and then the question mark at the end turns off the parser and then you have the command PHP info which can give us all the info about your PHP setup. Now do not put this program on the web. You don't want people uh, extracting all your PHP information because they can do you great harm and damage but for the local server that's great. Let's copy this code. Let's paste it into our text file that we have right here. Alright, and let's go ahead and save it, but not as a text file, as a PHP file. Let's save it into our PHP sandbox that we create on our desktop. And we want to make sure we put .php down here and save that. And now let's run that program. So I'm going to come right down here to my system icon tray. That's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go to localhost. There's my local host. Doesn't it look beautiful? Yes, it does. I'm going to scroll down here to my sandbox. And there's my folder I just created. I'm going to double click on that. And look at that. There's all that PHP information. Would not want someone from the web to access all this information. So now it's a good idea to have some starter code. And I have something called Hello Lively 3D. We're going to run this program real quick. And it's basically just a simple HTML file. And I want to say something. When you embed uh, PHP and HTML file, it will not run if you save it as an HTML file. So you have to run it as a PHP file to start up the parser for the PHP. But let me just say something also, that PHP was originally written for HTML. We're not going to do a whole lot of HTML programming. We're going to do flex and flash programming. So I'm going to show a simple example of embedding a PHP Hello World script. And then from that, we're going to rapidly move on to working with flash and flex. Let's grab this, let's throw this in our text editor, let's save this as a PHP file and run it and see what happens. So let's bring up our text editor. I will paste in this code. And I'm not going to save it as an HTML file, I'm going to save it as a what? That's right, a PHP file. Even though, even though it has the HTML tags, but since you saved it as a PHP file, it starts up the PHP parser. Let's go ahead and do that. Save that in my document, My Sandbox. Make sure you save it as Hello World PHP. We'll just call it Lively Hello. And save that. And now what we're going to do, we're going to go down to our WAMP icon. 
I'm going to go to localhost. And we're just going to surf down to our program down there. Right to my sandbox. And there's my lively PHP. Let's click on that and run it and cross our fingers. And indeed, we get the program Hello Lively 3D running from localhost, my sandbox, livelyhello.php. So it just throws that into your browser automatically by clicking on it for you. But how did this work? Well, it used the echo statement. Let's run back to that real quick. The echo in the PHP throws the text out of the stage. And we're going to use echo a lot, so it's important that you learn this. Uh, we have the statement, hello world, hello lively 3D, uh, in closing quotes. And we have a semicolon, basically a, an execution separator. So make sure you have all that in your code. That's how you embed into HTML. And guess what? We're not going to use it that much. We're going to be writing uh, straight PHP files. But that's your first two uh, programs in PHP.